break it down, transport it to your brain, brains, build it back up. Hello everyone, we're going to be looking at the programming language C++. I'm going to teach you how to get an integer from a string variable, and I'm also going to teach you how to ensure that your integer variable only receives numbers and not characters as input. First, I'm going to show you how to get an integer from a string. Very simple, not that complicated. Second, I'm going to show you how to ensure that your integer variable only receives numbers and not characters as input. After that, I'll show you how to do this using a function for ultimate efficiency. So to simply get a integer from a string variable, all you have to do is use the thing I've shown right here. My int variable is number result and the string is number entry. I use the uh, number result and I set it equal to a toy parentheses number entry dot C underscore C underscore str yada 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 this will put whatever's inside the string variable inside of the int variable now there are problems with this let's say I enter any characters before the numbers in the string let's say I enter in something like I don't know, J48. It will not work because it detects the J and J cannot be stored inside an int variable. Now let's say I have like a number like 45 and then I put like a character like J afterwards. It'll work then. But if I have any numbers after that J, it won't work. So if I have like 45 J72, It'll only detect the 45 and take that and put it into the int variable. There can be some problems with this. All right, so now I'm gonna tell you how to fix that issue that I was just describing concerning um, entering Characters. I'll be doing it by a a uh, do while loop. Sorry. Right here is the do while loop itself, and inside the do while loop, I'll be making use of a array as well as two for statements. Now, what I start with here, and I've used this, and it's successful. I know this to be true. I first initialize outside of the do while loop, I initialize string number entry, integer number result, as well as a bool variable loop check. Now that'll be useful because I use that to determine when to end this do while loop. The actual exit condition is loop check um, does not equal true. What that means is as long as loop check does not equal true at the end of this do while loop, it will continue doing whatever code is inside this loop. So in order to exit the loop, loop check needs to equal true. Now in here, I first ask for a for the user to please enter an integer. And I receive the value for that. I then initialize this array it's a character array and the characters in it are the numbers 0 through 9 this will be useful later make note of that I also establish int or initialize not establish I initialize integer length I set it equal to number entry dot size what this means is it sets it initializes this um, this array, not. What it does is it initializes this integer of length to be equal to the size of the string. What it means is, let's say number entry is it has a, uh, a 
the word is like Joey. That's four characters, which means length is going to be equal to four. This will be useful later. I also have int verify, and I make sure to set it equal to zero. This is also going to be explained in further detail later. And I set loop check equal to true. I do this before I do any of the uh, calculations and comparisons. It's like a sort of reset to ensure that um, it can be possible to exit. I'll explain that a little bit more later on as well. Now the four loops are where the magic happens. The first one is the only code it contains is the inner for loop. This outer for loop initializes a counter. Count the exit condition is count being greater or equal to length, and length again is number you know the number entry. So basically, when the count is equal to the size of the string, it leaves. And at the at the end of each run, it does count plus plus. In this inner for loop, it uses int numeral, so it's not equal to zero, numeral um, is less than or equal to nine. Once it's equal to a nine, well, after it's less, after it's greater than nine, it leaves. And then at the end of each iteration, it makes numeral and increments it, so it's slightly bigger. It then uses this if statement, and this is the really interesting part. And number entry, count, Whatever, I don't exactly know how to say this, but basically, this right here, you know, this is the string variable that the user entered, and right here inside these little brackets is the value of count right here. What that means is, let's say count is equal to a zero, right? And it will take that zero, and it uses that to determine what the first position is zero is obviously the first position I'm not explaining this the best but basically let's say I used Joey the word the letter J is at position zero and since count was at position zero when this first started it would just use J so it's gonna say if J is equal to check and it's gonna use numeral and numeral is right here numeral zero what's the first one what's at position zero zero j is not equal to zero so it checks that x checks if j is equal to zero and it'll do this this inner for loop will run itself nine times running through all nine positions here and then it'll increment count again and basically it means it goes to the, it moves on to the second position of the string and then runs the inner for loop nine times again and checks it. Now let's say um, the it matches. Let's see the let's say the character matches one of the positions in this array. Verify will increment by one. Now verify here is where I'm going to explain verify and what it actually does. Verify is used after the for loops end to compare um, the success the amount of successes to length. If verify does not equal length, which again, remember length is the size of the string, then loop check is set to false. Basically, verify counts the number of positions that are numbers. And if the number, if the, uh, if all the positions are numbers, that would mean it is equal to length and it would use this else statement and it would set number result equal to yada yada yada. It sets the it sets number the integer number result equal to the string, and then it would end the loop because again this loop check up here would remain true because this didn't happen. This happened instead, so it ends loop and then it just does the rest of the program. I'll test that real quick. I'm gonna enter in a uh, Joey. Input error non numerical uh, characters have been entered, which is what it said right here. See, it's it's right here, and it's well, it's not right here, but it was right here. Now it's making me re-enter that. So I'm gonna re-enter, and let's just go J45. Nope, doesn't work. Let's type in 45J. 
Nope, doesn't work. Let's try 45J72. Nope, doesn't work. Let's try 45. Bam, it works. Perfect, flawless victory. Quite exquisite. Now let's move on to the function. And the reason why I want to show you guys how to do this with a function is that if you wanted to have more than one integer variable checked, you're going to have to run through this uh, loop a bunch. And that'll really, uh, that'll really muck up your code and make it really thick and repetitive. And there's a way to cut down on that repetition. If you use this function right here, you only have to do it once. What I mean by that, and very, very poor way of saying it, what I mean is that it calls the function and basically all that code I had right there is inside of here. It's inside this function, which is called and assigned to a, you know, to an int number. And I can go ahead and I can uh, do this as many times as I want. This is basically just like a, uh, it's just a piece of code. And whenever I say, whenever I use this, it, the compiler interprets this as do all of this. And then assign the result of that to this. Now let's run it and I'll show you. It does the exact same thing, just a slightly more complicated. J45 doesn't work. 45 works. Magic. I would recommend using the function over just the loop because it makes everything much more legible and cleaner. Look, I mean, look how clean this is. That doesn't look too clean, but your overall function will look cleaner and you'll cut down on repetition which means it will be a lot easier to catch mistakes because you're not having to look through a you know, significantly larger amount of code. Well, that ends this video. If you guys found this to be useful, you know, subscribe. Share it with your friends, your other students, if they too, you know, might make use of this. And you know, rate the video, leave a comment, tell me what you thought of it. And if you do use it, do leave a comment. Please let me know. I would love to know that people are actually getting some use out of my videos. It's great encouragement, and I really enjoy your feedback. That being said, I hope you guys have a nice day. I'm going to end the video. Bye-bye.